we are hitting the back roads for a day of exploration. So let's go. It's another episode of danocan.com. We are making our first stop of the day here at uh, Little Chicago, actually known as Royalties, Alberta, which is now the site of a ghost town. Now there's not really any ghost town remnants left here, but this is the site of where the town was located. We're right alongside Highway 22, a.k.a. the Cowboy Trail here in Alberta. And today it's just a field, but uh, at one time, this was a bustling oil community. Here on the plaque, you can kind of see a photo of, uh, of what it looked like. It was quite the bustling town at the time. Hard to believe there's really nothing of it left. And on top of this cairn slash monument, a little miniature oil derrick. And here's the main sign, Little Chicago Royalties, 1934 to 1969, with a great shot of what Main Street looked like. Classic Prairie Main Street scene. Too bad none of those buildings remain, although I do believe, and don't quote me on this, some of them were moved into the nearby communities of Black Diamond and Turner Valley. So those buildings may still exist at some level, but I'm not sure on that. Now it is an interesting place to stop just because of the history and and the, uh, the town that was once here, but... I also had a little uh, secondary reason for making the stop. And that is because I had to do some geocache maintenance. I've had a geocache hidden here since 2010, so almost 12 years now. And one of the last finders reported that the cache container was missing, but the logbook was still in place. And indeed, I confirmed the logbook was still tucked away in its hiding spot. No sign of the cache container anymore. But, uh, spoiler alert, if you look inside the base of the oil derrick and reach way inside, there's a brand new cache container with a new log tucked away inside there. It's not super well hidden, but I figure, you know what, it's lasted 12 years. Let's see if it lasts uh, another 12. And this is a real shame. And I don't know if uh, other locations are seeing this, but I know this has become a very common occurrence in our area. The plaques here have actually been stolen. Uh, there were more plaques here on the cairn. You can see the spots where they were located. Uh, apparently people are stealing these because of their brass content and then selling them for scrap metal. So. That's really unfortunate that uh, people are that desperate for money that they are vandalizing historic sites just to get the brass plaques. So you can see from the sign here that the plaques were stolen sometime between July the 7th and July the 12th, 2022. So this is a really recent occurrence. We're talking, you know, in the last... Uh, two or three weeks as of the time of this uh, recording. And uh, if you do have any information, you are asked to either contact the Museum of the Highwood uh, at 403-652-7156 or the Turner Valley RCMP non-emergency line at 403-933-4262. Let's... Uh, Somebody might know something out there, so that's our public service announcement of the day. If you know anything about the theft of the plaques from Little Chicago, please call.
So we had an interesting experience. We were right in the town of Turner Valley and all of a sudden Dan is like, oh my God, and kind of freaking out. And then a big thunk, a deer had been running kind of alongside of us and decided to make a sudden movement and try and cross the street and actually ran into the side of the truck. We were all kind of rattled, but uh, the deer darted away, seemed perfectly fine, no damage to the truck, so we dodged a bullet on that one. So I did use the incident recording feature on our dash cam immediately after, I was gonna say we hit the deer, but more accurately, the deer hit us, uh, just to see if, uh, if I happened to catch any footage of it. And if not, it'll be worth a laugh just to hear our reactions to the thunk. Oh my God. And so is the truck, I think. I'm just going to look. Oh, actually, you know, now that I see it in a different light, we did suffer a little bit of a dent right down here on the lower part of our door. That's a new dent in our truck. Truck is not new, so it's not the first dent it's had, but I didn't notice that when we first got out in uh, Turner Valley to look at it. But... Yep, we will always have one of those character marks on the truck reminding us of the day a deer hit us. All right, first stop in the beautiful Porcupine Hills. Uh, we just pulled off a gravel road here and we're gonna go up a hill and grab a cache, but first let's kind of take a look around the area and see what we've got. So this is the view to the east looking out towards the prairies and there's the hill we're gonna work our way up and looking west I'll zoom in here for you a little bit over there you can see the beautiful Rocky Mountains so this is the area where they say the prairies and the mountains sort of meet and uh, that's definitely the case here can see both from where we're standing. We were just debating whether or not our truck could have climbed this hill. And there's a lot of loose rock up here, and it's pretty steep. So even though there's evidence of full-size vehicles coming up here, I'm thinking it was probably more like a Jeep or something, a little shorter wheelbase than a F-150 Ford. <laughs> and besides, there's no need. We don't need to take stupid chances. Look down at where we just came up. Pretty steep hill. Not my first choice. So we came up here for the geocache, but there was a truck following behind me, so I didn't pull off at the spot I wanted. And we came down to another pull off, and I think we went too far because Everywhere we're going up here, we're still 300 meters from the cache site and we keep running into a barbed wire fence. So I think we have to go back down the hill and back the row up on the road a little ways and pull off in a different spot. But the views up here are great anyway, so yeah, a little exercise won't hurt. There's a nice breeze, so it's not crazy hot up here and the, the view is quite remarkable. So I don't hate this detour.
Okay, so we have moved back down the main road a little bit, came up a little four by four trail that you can kind of see behind us here. Came up till we found a convenient spot where we could spin the truck around for an easy exit and figured that's far enough. Um, things are pretty dry here, so I'm not really worried about being stuck in mud or anything like that, but uh, I don't want to get high centered on something because, you know, cell service is spotty if exists if it exists at all and uh, just don't want to take that chance when we're traveling by ourselves and uh, not knowing how this road or trail, uh, what it turns into further up here, just not worth the risk. So playing it safe, playing it smart. Those who have known me are probably wondering who I am, but you know, you get older, you get wiser. Nothing too sketchy here, but again, why take chances? So there's a look at the road we were on. And the geocache is supposed to be somewhere in these rocks based on uh, what the GPS is telling me right now. Great view from up here. Let's see if we can find the container. There we go. We made the find, a little pop bottle preform just hidden amongst uh, under some rocks here. So I'll tuck it back where we found it, cover it over with the middle rock there. This one was probably like that to kind of hide the white. There it is. That one was only hidden in March of this year. So we're just the second people to find it since it was hidden. So that's kind of cool. Now we're gonna walk back to where the truck is and carry on. So we've been basically kind of driving along some gravel roads. I let the GPS do some routing for us and it kind of took us out of the Porcupine Hills and kind of skirted us down to the west of the hills, kind of between Highway 22 and the Porcupine Hills along some gravel roads. So not quite the remote, uh, trip I thought it was going to be but we're just turned and according to the compass we're heading northeast again and it looks like we're heading back into the hills a little bit more so this is uh, kind of fun just seeing where these roads take us. What do you oh, what? Yeah. Is that a bent tree? Is it natural or is it Wow. I've never seen a tree trunk bent quite like that. Very strange. Unimproved. It's a road. Okay. So we just made another turn here. Sign at the beginning of this road said unimproved road, use at own risk. So that sounds like our kind of road. And, oh, neat old barn there. That's kind of cool. The road is pretty rough, but that's why we brought the truck.
quick stop along the road here. I see the shell of what looks like an old pickup truck off in the uh, grass. Wanted to stop, get a couple pictures, and give you a closer look at it as well. This is where I count on the people who watch the channel, who know a lot more about vehicles than me, to kind of give me an idea as to the make and model that this might be. I'll kind of move around to the front. I'm watching for creatures and things here in the tall grass to see if the hood and the grill helps anybody ID it. Doesn't look like there's much left of the inside. It looks like the glass on the dashboard almost looks like it melted at one point, which it's 30 plus degrees out right now, so doesn't surprise me. All right, time to keep this adventure rolling back on the road. kind of truck is it? An old one? No distinguishing features? Nothing that I could tell. Stopping by to get a cache called Postcards from Alberta, and it's easy to see why it's got that name when you see the spot we're at here. Beautiful views from up on top of this hill, looking out over the landscape. Hot enough that the fan of the truck keeps kicking on. Threshing machine sitting there in the yard of this ranch pretty cool pretty cool let's see if we can find the cash over here i haven't read any description of it but i imagine it's not going to be too hard to find in fact i think that might be it right down in there yeah that was it Looks like an old peanut butter jar. It was kind of damp inside, but I was able to scratch my name or our names in the log book a little bit, but things were kind of wet and moldy. So you know what that means, back on the road. just kept following random roads but we have ended up here at the old man reservoir at the little picnic area so wind farm and a little farm village museum thing across the road there here's the reservoir and the plan all along has been to grill some hot dogs and things once we found a spot to uh, settle down for lunch but you will notice there is no grilling taking place and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit why but here you see Le Barbecue Canadian Tire Special down here you see one of the many collection of the Danocan propane tank uh, down here you see one of the many uh, tanks from the Danocan propane tank collection. What you 
don't see is a way to connect the grill to the tank. Yes, I forgot to grab the hose out of the garage. So we have a cooler full of hot dogs, buns, ketchup, mustard, relish. We brought everything for a hot dog cookout except the one thing we need to actually grill. So there we are, bunch of sad faces, disappointment. Mabel's not going to get a hot dog anytime soon. We're probably a good two, two and a half hours from home. So I guess we're probably just going to start heading that direction now. Because it's getting, you know, later in the afternoon. We were both finally getting hungry and there's no hot dogs. I am so disappointed in myself right now. I was really looking forward to this. So I guess we'll pack back up and start on the way home. And as I load the propane tank, make sure, let's make sure that's on. As I load the propane tank into the back of the truck, the other really sad thing about this is if you remember from our Eau Claire camping video, I have like four bottles of those little disposable propane bottles. Uh, I have four of those in the garage. And I actually saw them on the shelf in the garage and thought about bringing those along instead of the, the big 20 pound propane tank. But I'm trying to burn through those 20 pound propane tanks as fast as possible. So I chose to bring it along instead. Had I brought one of the disposable bottles, it would have threaded right onto the barbecue without needing the other hose. And we could have been enjoying hot dogs right about now. So. Uh, what are you gonna do? Okay, I am baking in the sun, but we wanted to make one last detour on our way home. Uh, this here is a house uh, near uh, Cowley, Alberta. It's a very famous house amongst uh, aficionados of abandoned places. It's been photographed an awful lot over the years. It's deteriorating a fair bit but still hasn't changed all that much in uh, time since I first photographed it, I don't know, say 10, 12 years ago. But it's a really remarkable uh, structure. So if you have ever seen the, I believe it's a Disney movie called The Journey of Natty Gan, um, the final scene, I believe it's the final scene of that movie, takes place right inside this room of this house. It was filmed on location here. Uh, obviously the house was in much better condition uh, at that point. But uh, yeah, this is where that was filmed. Uh, not the most popular movie or most well-known movie, I should say. Uh, not a bad movie. We watched it mainly because of the different locations that were featured in it. And uh, yeah, so if you get a chance to check it out, watch it, you will see this house in that film. I think amongst Abandoned Places fans, it's more popular just because of how photogenic it is than it is because of its uh, appearance in that movie. I would go on to even, you know, posit that most people who come out and photograph this house haven't even seen the movie or heard of the movie or know that this house is in that movie. So with that, I think we are going to wrap up this video. It uh, is a very hot day right now. It's about 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, I should have my hat on, but I left it in the truck while I just quickly ran out here to photograph this house. Um, we're just going to head straight for home because, you know, we've had some potato chips and uh, Hawkins cheesies, not sponsored, but it's not a road trip unless you've got Hawkins cheesies. If you're not from Canada, you may not be aware of Hawkins cheesies, but if you come to Canada and visit us, you owe it to yourself to try them. You'll never bother with Cheetos or anything like that again. Hawkins hard cheesies, absolutely the best road trip snack. That being said, let's get back on the road and head for home. I'm going to probably uh, cut the video off here because uh, 
like I said, we're hungry. We just want to get home and eat the hot dogs that we plan to eat on our picnic on this trip. So from just outside the town of Cowley, Alberta, this is Dan O'Can saying thank you for watching. If you haven't, I got to ask, please subscribe. Always appreciate that. And uh, give us a comment in the below if you want, just to let us know you're out there. We always love it. Thanks. So with the original hot dog picnic idea scrapped, just cook in the backyard instead. Oh, that was worth the wait.